Hello, everybody. Yes, I am live again today. Who could guess twice in two weeks? Uh, join us. We're going to be pumping on today. I've got a bunch of guests, and I am going to be doing some kind of makeover madness from Thanksgiving. Because, you know, we all got that food. So join me. I'm Frank underscore mentor SF, and I am going to be on for Food Talk TV this afternoon for an hour or so. Going to be making some mashed potato and stuffing waffles. Yes, waffles and a bread salad. I'm using what I got left over. That's what we're doing today. So come join us if you're around. I'd love to have you with us. Let me set up. So I hope people are having a good day. Hope you're caught up from the weekend. We are going to do a little, because you know, let's face it, I think we are all a little tired of leftovers. So I'm going to show you a couple tips that I use when I need to make leftovers. And I just refuse to throw things away. I'll be honest. I don't want to throw anything away. So I'm trying to do as best I can. So welcome in. Yeah, we are. I know I am live again, but I got some surprises today. And one of them just popped in. Hey, Sherry. Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm fine, but you're early. Well, it's a few minutes, five minutes. I was just making sure I had light. What's that? That's pretty in there. You like it? I finished it today. I love it. Well, I figure if I'm going to use this satellite kitchen, I might as well enjoy it. <laughs> really, it's just pretty. I got a little something. Well, thanks for coming in today, and we'll see if we get the other folks in. And welcome, everybody. So I'm sure everybody is so tired of leftovers. How about you? Are you still eating leftovers? I've got to make them for Wednesday on my live. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm not eating them per se, but mm -hmm. I will. I will this thing I'm going to make Wednesday. And, well, we had a, a turkey a la king last night. At, oh, it was so good. Oh, that sounds good. I haven't. I made a variation of that not too long ago. Well, today, what I'm going to do is, so unusually, I'm a stuffing person, a dressing person. It's actually probably my, my favorite part of Thanksgiving, other than the fact that I like sandwiches. So I, because I did a rolled turkey instead of a, a stuffed turkey, instead of a, uh, that was deboned, and I had some guests who don't eat mushrooms. I had one dressing that had mushrooms and sausage, and then I had a plain dressing. So I had lots of dressing, and I figured, got to figure out a way to use all that. Hello, everybody. Let me know if um, you see Andrea or um, Trisha come in, and I'll add them in. Well, see, I, it doesn't show me who is has requested. So I don't Let's know. Let's see. Uh, I see. Oh, I don't see them in the room yet, so I don't think they're online yet. Okay, well, that they're they're thinking four more minutes. <laughs> yeah, so we got time. Um, You're just I was just yeah, I saw it. Oh yeah, well, I was gonna, you know, it's, uh, some days here I want to make sure my my light works, I, the new setup. But welcome everybody. We're gonna be going live in a few minutes, and I am gonna be showing you. Well, one of them is an adaption. It's a very Italian Italian American salad, and it's how you can use leftover bread. Now, come on. You know you've got leftover bread that's getting a little bit stale. I'm going to show you how to use it and marry it with three or four other things and have a great lunch or a salad for later today. Then I am going to take, so let me show you just while we're waiting. So I made, so I made candied carrots, uh, glazed carrots, and I did roasted sweet potatoes. And still, you see they're cold still. And, of course, we had dressing. And I have just a little bit. See, I save all my to-go containers for these things. I have a little bit of mashed potatoes left over and some stuffing. So I figured out the other night I rolled them all together and I made sort of like a croquette. But I didn't want another croquette today. So I thought, I'm going to make waffles. And then top them. People can top them with whatever they want. So that's what we're going to make today. We're going to create these little waffles. And I'm actually using the little machine which I love because they're cute. And if I make it a whole is. bunch, I, isn't it? it is. They're uh, about the right size. And um, for anything, uh, and I, I you know, uh, I will sometimes do cheese if I want to get the cheese stuff with them. 
But uh, I, you know, instead of using the big square, I thought, ah, oh, today I'll use the little one. And so it's, uh, that, I think I got this at Target. Is the biscuit going to be the waffle? Well, yes, the waffle is going to be the main thing. So the waffle, where, where you're going to, I'm going to show you three or four different ways that you can actually serve the waffle. Um, but it's really, think of it this way. And Sherry, you and I talked about this the other night. The waffle is the vehicle. You can put anything on it. So you want to put ham. You want to put tuna fish. You want to put store-bought cold cuts. It becomes the vehicle for anything. You want to put spread. Put spread on it. It doesn't matter. That's what we're trying to do. And oh, I see Free Mama Ann is coming in. There she is. Hello. Welcome in. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ms. Sherry. How you doing? I'm doing good. What you making? What we are going to make, first, I'm going to make a little salad. Now, Andrea, I know you don't eat a lot of bread products unless they're keto-free. But there is keto-free. And one of the things I know, Sherry, I don't know if you've tried them, but I know Christine has talked about it. Keto-free bread dries out really quick. And it has yeah. a tendency to not keep its moisture. So this is a perfect way... If uh, so, Andrea, if you're eating keto bread, you got leftover stuff, but it works. So bread. I had these ubiquitous uh, rolls, mm. nice. and then I love seeded baguettes. I love the flavor, but you know, they're like hard after a couple days, right? Like a brick, <laughs> uh, pretty much. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a bread salad. So. A bread salad is very traditional in Italian households. It's actually called panzanella. And it's a, it's usually a big summer dish. And then you mix your, your stale bread with tomatoes and whatever else you want. I make, I make one in the summer with um, tomatoes and shrimp, cold, mm. cold shrimp that I boiled with the, with the bread and just let it marinate for a little while. So the bread softens. It just becomes this great vehicle. Because, you know, the reality is there are times when I've made stuff, it's really because I want the drippings on the bread, yeah. and that's my favorite part of the meal. You can tell that bread is hard with how you're cutting it. Yeah. I'm using the good knife because it is a little bit tough. So, but, you know, I don't want to throw away. Now, you could, if you wanted, you could very easily have taken this bread, put it in the, um, either used your, your, uh, um, Hand, hand processor or throw it in a, a grinder and turn it into breadcrumbs. But quite frankly, then I have to remember to freeze them or do something with them. Instead, I'm going to make a salad. Hey, hey there. And I think I saw Brad come into the room. Brad, hey, boys. Is Brad, the chef god. I've invited a bunch of people. Thank you. But, All right. Everybody so, share the live to 10 people. 10 Please. people. All right. All right. So the panzanella, which is an Italian American salad, often it, from what I, 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 it used to be a way to use up. Because remember, in in Italy and even originally in parts of this country, people didn't cook bread every day in their own stove. They would make their doughs and they would bring them to a town oven, cook them, and so they would have to cook bread for a week. So, but by the time you're, you know, it gets a little stiff. So this is a way to use up bread products. Now, you know, I will tell you that in my house, bread products, and that includes products like Danish scones. As soon as they get a little too hard to eat, I chop them up. I make an egg custard and I rebake those suckers and they become whatever it is. And they become a pie sort of bread pudding, custardy pudding. I am so not can... throwing them away. I have a question. Mm-hmm. So you can, to make breadcrumbs out of dried bread, you just put it in like a grinder? Yeah, you can. So, uh, so uh, yes, let me. So now because I'm using a flavored bread, I'm making sure to get all the seeds. Why waste it? But yeah, if you have um, dried bread that's really crusty, you can put it in a coffee grinder or you can uh, use an immersion blender and it'll actually uh, crumb it up. And then you have perfect breadcrumbs. But. You have to remember they're fresh. They're not processed like you would buy in a grocery store. So you have to use them up accordingly. All right. So let's see. What else am I going to put in my bread salad? Well, Thanksgiving, if you celebrate it, it's a very fatty, rich meal. It's got turkey and butter 
and uh, potatoes and, and just fats and all that goodness. This year, instead of a green salad, um, I adapted a bitter salad. So uh, I got a friend of ours gave us some uh, persimmons, the hard persimmons. And this is what they look like. This is the leftover salad from that day. So it's, it's an orange, it looks like an orange, um, I have to almost, almost like an orange apple, but oh, I love it's them. hard. Now they have a soft permission uh, persimmon, but this is a hard persimmon. So I thought, well, I'm going to take the persimmons and I'm going to mix them with radicchio. This is radicchio. Okay. It's a bitter leafy green, or I would say green, but it's really red. This case. Who sells that? Grocery stores. You can find it. Usually you can find it over by the dill and the endive and that section. That's not usually near the lettuce. So it's over like where the dill and um, uh, endives are in the grocery store. You can Frank, find it. You, I've never seen it. Frank, do you know what I'm feeling like right now? What do you feel like? Uh, like the northerner who goes, okra? What is okra in purple whole peas? <laughs> I'm going... <laughs> Radicchio, what? So radicchio is it. so radicchio is sort of like uh, it's a softer cousin of red cabbage. It's it here. Let me show you so you can actually see when you're cutting what it. it, looks like it to me. It's not quite as firm. Yeah, that's what I, I said. Can... I said a cousin of cabbage. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, it does have a uh, kind of an effect like cabbage, but it's much softer. But it, what it is, is because it's got a bitter quality, it's perfect for really fatty meals. But what's nice enough, now, you guys all know I really like fennel. The reason I like them for parties is they don't go, it doesn't get soft when you add a salad dressing. So I have some left over. I'm going to keep some because I, I have to go into my office tomorrow and I'll use some for a different salad tomorrow. I've so never this was heard all of, that was. I've never heard of a bread. I've never heard of a bread salad, ever. They call it a uh, panzanella in Italian. And so I made this salad, and this has um, it has the persimmons, it has the radicchio. I also put orange juice, lemon juice, salt, pepper, a little bit of dill because I had some dill laying around. Um, and then I used fennel, the fennel root. Now, remember, the fennel root has a little bit of green on the top. So that's all this is. And the reason I like them, it's a very bitter, crunchy salad. So this isn't an onion. That's a piece of fennel that absorbs some color. It's very crunchy. I can hear the crunch. And this is since Thanksgiving. It's still crunchy. Wow. So you're going to put that in? I'm going to use this as the beginning of my dressing and sort of think of it as the... the condiment to my salad because that's all I had left I don't want to waste it so why not add it it's already got its own dressing and then I can add to the dressing to freshen it up he's so smart he's amazing right. bread salad right now so now I looked in my refrigerator what did I have now I had a friend who came who doesn't particularly he's not a fancy eater he just loves to come and eat so he did bring me um Something I probably would not have in my house I'm is okay. string cheese. Oh, string cheese. It's a, a mozzarella flavored one, but I don't usually have it in my house, but I have it, so I might as well use it. So now I'm just going to dice that up too and throw it in the salad. String cheese. Pretty cool. Now, the reason I'm doing this first before the waffles is because I want the waffles, I want this to soak while I'm doing the waffles. All right, cucumbers. I we have several different kinds of cucumbers. This is the cucumber you do not need to peel or take the seeds out. It's the mm -hmm. English cucumber, and it usually comes wrapped and is long and narrow. Oh, I've seen those. It's I the one that's that. very similar to a pickling cucumber. I <laughs> often, like, I make this for a salad myself with just vinegar, sugar, salt, pepper, and let it sit for an hour, and then we can serve it. But I used it on the um, crudite, you know, the vegetables, so I don't want it to go bad. Does it taste the same or different? Sweeter. I right? think it. I think it's sweeter. Yeah, it doesn't have a. There's sometimes a regular cucumber can have a little bit of bitterness. Yes. 
All right. So um, I have some leftover parsley. So you know what? I'm just going to throw some parsley in this. Now, if you are on our blog, Food Talk TV, one of our creators, uh, just like Granny, did a really great blog for us last week to talk about the different types of parsley. Because there are actually three different types of parsley, but two that we talk about a lot is flat leaf and curly. And I rarely use curly parsley. I usually almost always use the Italian flat leaf parsley. But they both have a valid use. So check out the blog if you haven't seen it. What else did I have? I'm looking at my herbs that I had left over. All right. What else did I pull out of the refrigerator? Got some, uh, I've got some tomatoes. They're, um, they're looking a little one or two day old, kind of, you know, I'm getting them just before they're starting to get uh, a little bit wrinkled. Guess what? They're going in too. I would, I, I would eat this already. I've you know never what? Heard of you it. know what, Miss Sherry? If I had okra, I could put okra in here. No problem at all. Ooh, pickled Anything okra. you have could go in here. Now, I wouldn't put cooked things in here, except for maybe a cooked protein. Uh, you know, like cold chicken, if I had leftover tuna? chicken, or steak. What was that? What about tuna? Yeah, I can't see why not. Oh. Can't see why not. Now, of course, I had a antipas plate. I have leftover pepperoni. That can go in. I'm a big pepperoni and salami fan. So it's, it's something that's always in my house. Also, when, when you take vinegar and you mix it with pepperoni or chorizo or any smoked or, or prepared meat like this, prosciutto, speck, um, any of those, it's going to just intensify all the flavors. All right. So my salad is ready. What else do I have? I have some leftover cilantro. I love going in there too. A little bit of freshness. I love cilantro. Uh, not everybody does. Now, I want this to make sure it doesn't taste like Thanksgiving. So I have some toasted sesame seeds in my cabinet. They're going in too. Looking to see what else I what else did I have that I want to use? Andrea, tell them about Food Talk for just a second. Hi, everybody. This is Food Talk TV. This is Frank. This is Sherry. And I'm Andrea. We're a group of about 12 creators. We have a website called www.foodtalktv.com. We are also on all platforms. We are on Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. And we are not on Tinder. <laughs> no, we are not. We're on Bumble. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Hey, guys, tap the screen and share the live and bring more people in. Por favor. All right. So I had on my appetizer plate, I had roasted peppers. This is the brand I buy. I don't have any agreement with them. I just like roasted peppers and I didn't feel like making my own. So they're going to go in. Because I don't want to waste them, you know? And then I also had some artichoke carts that were on my, my appetizer plate. Now, these are marinated already. Now, remember I said I, I, didn't, I was going to add to my dressing? Guess what I'm using for part of my dressing? What Oil. Is that? What is that? Artichoke. It is marinated artichokes. Okay. Where do you uh, get that? I've never seen them in a jar. Grocery store in the pickle, where the pickle aisle is. They look like my pepper and chini peppers that I... Yeah. They're, they're actually right next to where the pepper and chinis are. And if I had some, they would have gone in here too. All I right. love them. Beautiful. Now, I'm just going to add a little bit of fresh lemon. Do you think I'll... Remember, we have the dressing from the original salad already in here. That's a good question. Hey, Frank, yeah. do you think avocado would be good in that? Yes. Now, remember, you're talking to somebody who loves pickled avocados. So, yes, I think avocado would be great in here. Sorry, everybody. I'm picking out the seeds because I didn't see them. Um, uh, but, yes, a, a pickled avocado would be great in here. Or just plain avocado slices. I would probably um, uh, be very, you know, I wouldn't slice them too small so they don't break up. Uh, or I would leave them on the top. 
All right, did I put everything in? I brought a little red uh, red wine vinegar just in case. Uh, you know, now sometimes would, you... would the red wine vinegar, if the bread wasn't hard, <laughs> would it make it too mushy? Well, yeah, Any um, the, if it was the softer bread, it would definitely make it mushier faster. That's why you want to use your leftover stale bread. Um, or put it in the oven at 200 degrees and just let it dehydrate for a little while. Okay. All right, everybody. I just made, and what did it take me? Less than 15 minutes. I just made, if you have cold cuts, turkey, ham, throw that in there. And I just made a full meal of just leftovers. That's so crispy. Oh, that looks so good. And it doesn't look like it's leftovers. And because if I, I think what you didn't notice me do earlier was uh, I added herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence is a combination of salt, pepper, sometimes uh, fennel, basil, lavender, and marjoram, and thyme. And it's a mixture. So, you know, because I used a lot of sage and the traditional Thanksgiving seasonings on some of this, I wanted to change it up just a little bit so it doesn't sound like it's a retread, because we've all been eating enough of the retreads. All right, this is going to sit and absorb its flavors, and I'm going to switch over I to the other top. I know what that is called. Panzanella. It's a kind of an, it's adapted from a bread, Italian bread salad called Panzanella, but really... It's not authentic. I just took the same concepts and I said, what do I do if I have all this leftover food? And that's what I decided to do. Can I read a couple of comments? Uh, yes, please. That's so Chris said, Frank, this would even be good for, uh, for as an antipasto for the Christmas table. And Ivy said, oh, I love the kitchen. Good vibes. Well, first of all, Chris, you're right. Um, if you wanted to make this a traditional antipasto, you could add olives, cheese. Um, you, and if you were going to use tuna fish, um, uh, Andrea, I think you asked me about this. Use the tuna with the olive oil because you're already adding olive oil anyhow, and it has its own flavor. Mm -hmm. And if you love my kitchen, I am so glad because this is <laughs> not really my kitchen. This is my back room where my laundry is, but it's the prettiest corner. I have all the best lights, so I turn it into my TikTok kitchen just for you all when I do these. But I'm glad you like the vibe. I do. It's beautiful. All right. Now we're going to start talking about waffles. I'm going to be making some waffles, folks. Mm -hmm. Now, remember I said I had made, I made uh, sweet potatoes that are just lightly kissed with cinnamon, and I roasted them. <laughs> and we had found a recipe which... Surprising, because it's not something I normally will do, is try a new recipe, but we did. And it had this really great uh, sauce that you, after you roast it on the platter, you drizzled over it. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Nice. And it's got yogurt, oil, garlic, cilantro. It's almost like a whole bunch of cilantro in here. And um, salt, pepper. And this was drizzled on top. So I'm going to use this a little bit later. This could have also been a great dressing for the salad. I was just thinking that, but it would be different. Um, if it would, well, you would, add, you would definitely change the flavor. So I have leftover mashed potatoes here going in. The sweet potato and the, uh, uh, the sweet potato and the candied um, carrots are going in. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm just I'm giving sorry. them a rough chop. Um, they're so soft. All those together. I am. Oh my. I am. Let's tap those screens, everybody. I am going to be breaking every food rule you can imagine right now. Now remember, mashed potatoes and these these vegetables are already super soft. If you cook them once, they tend to get soft, and maybe you could reheat them once, and they're good. But if you don't. Yeah. All right. So we got mashed potatoes, um, candy carrots, and roasted but uh, roasted sweet potatoes. Wow. Okay. And now dressing. All right. And everybody knows the difference of dressing and stuffing and all that bubble blue, which is very different from the north and the south. This is a dressing. It was made 
outside of the bird. It's got mushrooms and carrots and celery. I didn't actually make this one. A friend of mine made it. Um, I make the same dressing all the time. And I, it is very funny because um, I've been using the same recipe for my mom since she's been making it. And it's if I'm going somewhere, it's one thing. But if I'm making that this dressing for Thanksgiving, it's what I'm making. There's no question it's what I make. And it generally has, you know, sage and garlic, parsley and egg. Um, um, grated cheese, you know, all the, all the standard stuff. All right, so I have all my mushy ingredients left over from Thanksgiving. All right, nice. folks, let me, add, let me tell you one thing. When you're going to use an egg and you're adding an egg to any batter, don't just pour the egg in. You want to give it a little, break it up, okay? You got to break, it doesn't have to be super whipped, but you have to break it up. And this is especially important, like a meatloaf, ground meat, um, anything that you're adding some eggs to. I find that if you keep the eggs whole, because it's you, you end up having to mix longer to make sure you get all of that egg incorporated. In this case, the egg is essentially my binder. Ooh, potato candy. That is a cool idea. Have you ever had sweet potatoes that have been candied? And I'm talking about, I don't know, they're crunchy sugar on the outside. They're just like candy. I, mm -hmm. I got some in Mexico once. Oh, my. Yeah, I had a version that way. And then I had a version where they candied them and then they wrapped them in bacon and recooked them in brown sugar even longer. So <gasps> it was pretty decadent. Yes. Now, so all it's in here is my egg, my sweet potatoes, my carrots, my um, mashed potato, and my stuffing. And I'm just incorporating it. And along the way, I'm, I'm mashing it a little bit more. And I'll show you what it I looks like. I said maybe with some capers. Oh, Yeah. You know, if I were making this for something, that's when. But remember, this is a leftover remake. So I'm only using what I have at the house. And I happen to use my capers recently because I made some fish and I use um, capers with a lot of fish. All right. What did I forget? That's for afterwards. All right. I forgot to tap those screens, everybody. Share the live. All right. I'm going to turn on my handy dandy, my cute little waffle maker. It's cute. I bought this one because I was experimenting with ways to um, change things up, and I love the size. I have a regular size one, too, because I happen to like waffles. What All is right. that? What, what These are my salt it? and pepper shakers. Get out of here, Frank. Let me they're, see. In the, they're in the Futop TV sh shop. Aren't they cute? Uh, yes. They're How do you put it in there? Uh, they, they unscrew when you fill them up. Wow. Notice how I go like this, like I can see better. <laughs> they unscrew really easily, and um, you just uh, fill them up. And I like them because they're, they're small size. Um, they're perfect to put on the table. And if they dry, they spill on the table when you have company, they don't, nothing spills out. And they're, uh, they're grind, so I like a ground pepper anyhow. I have a question. When you get mm -hmm. ready to put that in the waffle maker, can you angle the camera to where we can see the waffle maker? Oh, yes. That's on my agenda. Okay, good. Because I don't want to oh, miss. So, nope, no problem. I'm just shifting it around. I'm just saying, like, how much do you put? And... Yeah. How's that? Can you see the waffle maker? It's beautiful. Better, better, better. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Now. Now. Yeah. All right, waiting for that. So how much am I going to put? I'm probably going to put mm, Is that the good, smallest dasher? This is the, what size is this one? You know, Kaz always tries to tell me what size they are. And yeah, they, they say on there, but I'm too old to read it. Uh, this is the 18 by 8. Okay. Whatever that means. I'll be honest, if I were just doing me, I would just experiment. So my, my machine is red, it's green now, it's getting nice and hot. Pam! 
food spray. We're not, we don't, if they're not paying us, we don't mention them. <laughs> Unless it's better than bullion. Yeah, I have to mention it because I want people to put it in there. Well, I like it. And you know, Sherry, I am not a big fan. Um, hey, let me know if Trish wants to come in if she comes in the room. You know, I'm not a big, I, I just am not, a, I didn't grow up with it, so I don't use um, a lot of the show. seasoning mixes. But, but she, better than bullion, I'm a big fan of what's that? I said I don't see her. Um, okay. Yeah, I think Bradley is sold on better than bullion now. I do like it. I mean, you have to practice with it, you know, find out is it too salty, not salty enough. So what I did was I took my mix, which is mashed potatoes, stuffing, roasted carrots, roasted sweet potatoes, um, and an egg, mixed it up good. And I'm looking at my clock because these are going to cook – Maybe six minutes. Hey, um, if, if you girls, Ange and Meal and Ivy, are wanting this recipe, you can go to foodtalktv.com in a couple of days, and it will be up there. Andrea, will you put a timer on for maybe five minutes for me? Who, me? Yes. So, I've got my first of the... Um, waffles, and I am a firm believer in waffle. The first batch of waffles or pancakes are always going to be bad. Like, it's just something that there's about it. So I'm going to give them a little bit, but while that's doing its thing, let me show you how our salad's looking. I got a timer going. That that really looks good. I know it is. Mm. And the harder the bread the longer the salad can sit. So you can make it early and you're, you know, you can get to it a little bit later. You got four minutes. Perfect. So while that's doing its thing. It, it's a bread it, salad and I forgot it's what a, it's called. It's oh. called Panzanella. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, if I was, a, if I was a, if I was, I mean, this is not what I would consider authentic. It's just, the idea of a of panzanella salad is a salad that is made up with stale bread and sometimes tomatoes because tomatoes have a lot of their own juice and they're sweet, salt, pepper, vinegar, whatever you want. But I took that in, hmm, how do I use up my old bread, some old salad that I had a bitter green salad so everything was really crispy. And I added a little bit of uh, roasted red peppers and artichoke hearts that were marinated and I put them all together and I have a salad. All right, two minutes. Um, I look almost done. Yep. I should have thought about panzanella being uh, bread because in Spanish, pan is bread. So pan, panzanella, yeah. So these usually will take seven to ten minutes. Now, depending on how thick, like if I were doing this in the big waffle, it gets it's a heavier one. They might get a little thinner. Um, they'll be anywhere from a um, sort of a potato pancake, soft potato pancake, to a traditional waffle. But they're not going to be hard, hard until they've cooled for a while. All right. I would have never thought of this. And I just got a waffle bowl maker. Uh, but you'll find out, you know, even waffles will be soft until they, they cool. Right. That's like a moss down. They're super, super soft, so you have to move kind of carefully with them. What's His that? Name is Frank under Frank underscore mentor SF, and he's cooking for food top. But he's as I Frank. lick my fingers because I'm the one eating them. But so. let me tell you guys, if you will follow Food Talk TV, all the creators are in there, and we have our own little category, and you can watch our videos. So he's in there. Follow Food Talk TV. Then you can find Frank. <coughs> Beautiful. Yes. So they they are a little soft when you pull them out. That's you know. So you have to kind of be gentle, which is not always my um my specialty. Even with I'm that person that goes to the, the hotels that have a waffle maker, and I'm like, come on, come on, come on, be done, be done, be done. 
<laughs> Frank. <laughs> Oh, it's man. true. Yeah, I'm like, but hotel I love them crispy. Irons are amazing. Say that again. Those hotel waffle irons are amazing. They are. And Thank you, Chris. I do like those. Now, so now all I'm doing is I'm going to make another batch. I'm going to use a little bit less, you know, because I it's it there isn't like I haven't measured this out. This is something I was experimenting with for you all today because I was tired of eating the same food. Right. So I'm putting these you suckers put back dressing. in. Did you put dressing in the, I think you did, right? Yes, there is. So in the mix, let me show you the mix. There is mashed potatoes left over, leftover dressing, which had sausage and mushrooms in it. There is roasted sweet potatoes and there was uh, roasted uh, or candied, uh, uh, candied carrots. Plus a little, what one egg mixed up, and that's what's in there. Jeffy's here, and the chef got, and um, Christine. Yeah, uh, October Dragonfly, and our number one favorite, Chris is here. Who? That's so Chris. Oh, and hey so Chris, hey everybody. So tonight, usually, on, uh. Um, on Mondays, uh, Trisha and, or Dan has been um, been on, but Dan asked if we could cover for him tonight. So I said, I'm happy to. And, of course, everybody was willing to jump in and decided to join me tonight. So as these cool, they get harder so you can handle them. Oh, those look good. Now, remember, if you like cheese, and I don't generally eat a lot of cheese, you could put cheese in here, too. Totally would have been fine. So how do you dress these up? Well, you could make them like mini sliders if you wanted. Be totally fine. Um, so you could, maybe you have a little bit of leftover turkey, like a minuscule amount. Put a little piece of turkey on one or two of them. Those screens, everybody. Or you can do with my, with this incredibly, I just love this. It could be my new favorite dip, which uh, was the um, cilantro garlic yogurt dip. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. If you had gravy, you could drop, you know, put some gravy on this now. You heat up your leftover gravy or... If you are, um, if you run out of gravy, uh, you open up a, 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 a canned product because who's going to know but you anyhow? Guess you once in. All right. I sent you the invite. I see her little name. Hola, hola. Hola. Hey there. Hola. Frank, I, I, I came in right at the right time. I see you making little waffles. I am making little waffles. Yeah, looks yeah. good. I made little waffles because I like the little waffle maker instead of the big waffle maker today. Me too. I wanted to show people how they could use what they have in a different way. Hey, our organizer man is sending a little hearts. Oh, uh, how are you? I hope you're well. <laughs> Beautiful. Now I saw you just before I came in with your with your mixture. It was almost like what I put in those tacos, right? Like it is essentially. I mean, you know, and... it's got stuffing. It's oh got sweet gosh. potatoes, mashed potatoes, dressing. Yep. Carrots and that I cooked. Egg. A raw and a raw egg, egg because I needed and a okay. binder to, to hold okay. it all together so that it would bind. Um, it takes, uh, we're finding out they're taking uh, pretty close to five to seven minutes. It could be a little bit more. And what I'm going to show you is a whole bunch of different ways that you could serve these. So you could, in theory, come New Year's Eve, you could make up a version of this very easily if you wanted. Um, so what was I going to do on this one? Let me see. Let's put something else on there. Oh, yeah. 
It's beautiful. Look how beautiful he played that. All right, so here we go. We've got my leftover pepperoni. So here's a perfect little appetizer. <laughs> You've got your turkey. Now, I didn't have any leftover. Um, I didn't have any leftover um, uh, gravy because I used that last night because I took, actually, if you look on our blog, um, Sketchy Chef, Trisha made these really incredibly good um, uh, tacos with her leftovers. So I decided instead of frying them because I don't like to fry in the house. Well, I'm told I can't fry in the house because the boys don't like it. Uh, I took pie crust and I did a very similar mix and I put them in my pie crust, cut them out like samosas, threw them in the oven. So I made those last night for dinner and I used the leftover gravy for those. So did you love those? Did you love those? I did. I did. All right. So let me show you what we got here. We've got one of our waffles that have our mashed potato, carrots, uh, stuffing and um, uh, sweet potatoes with a piece of turkey, some roasted pepper. Nice. If you want to go simple, you've got your lunch meat that's left over. Or if you did an appetizer uh, plate and you have salamis, this is a cilantro, yogurt, garlic, mm. and olive oil dressing that was Ooh. actually designed to go on top, to drizzle on top of the sweet potato. We found the recipe. I fell in love with it. There's like a head, it's like a head of cilantro. It's very cilantro forward, but if you like, which I do. So that's just very simple. And then we make a homemade um, salsa, cranberry salsa, which is two oranges, a bag of cranberries, maybe three quarters of a cup of sugar. But I make it all the time because I have to really like it and everything. So what I've done is I've made you a little quad tasting plate. And then panzanella salad. So this is the salad that you would eat with your leftover bread, your leftover vegetables, uh, your leftover <laughs> salad in this case, because I had persimmons, which are perfect for this. I got dinner in an hour, all reused, but nothing is going to scream Thanksgiving. It's going to be feeling like this is a completely fresh, let me give you a good view there, meal. That looks like, all, that looks like restaurant quality. Yes. <laughs> Right, it like, could be. I suppose if I was, can you order that? Yeah, what yeah. type of cheese would a person sprinkle on that if they wanted cheese? Say that again. What type of cheese would a person sprinkle on that if they wanted cheese? Well, think when you eat turkey, what's the first cheese that comes to mind in a sandwich? Swiss, provolone, Swiss, you know, ham often goes with Swiss, roast beef goes with cheddar. I think for turkey, you could do a turkey and Swiss. Um, or a turkey and brie. If I had brie, I would put on it. But I think it, really when it comes to cheese, it's a very personal issue. You, you, you like the ones you like and it doesn't matter. Um, I, I buy a lot of uh, blend cheeses. I like salty cheeses. So I have both Mexican salty cheeses, uh, ricotta insalata, which is an Italian um, hard cheese, which has got a very, it's like the Italian salty version of a feta. Um, but I think a cheddar would be fine. Uh, anything that melts if you want to melt it. Parmesan? Mm. Uh, you could. Now, I'll tell you, if you got a good Parmesan and you want to, I'm just going to bend this so I could actually give you a better view. Um, if you had that looks so uh, a good Parmesan, you could really add that to the mix um, no, while I it was did. cooking. It's beautiful. And I would, you know, I would probably say, because I'm a, Car a Parmesan, uh, I'm a fiend with Parmesan cheese. I always have both hard and grated. I would sprinkle a little bit of Parmesan on there for sure. That looks so nice. Christine says it's so pretty. It is. And you know, I think what's important to realize, there really is no recipe. It's, you have to think in terms of portion. If I'm going to take food that I want to put and bind together, then you need a binder. And what is the binder? Well, the binder in this case was eggs. So, is it one egg? Is it two egg? Is it one XL egg? You have to practice. You have to deal with the food. So I wanted this consistency. And if I were going to eyeball how much I made in here, it was probably about three cups of mix altogether. <laughs> I used one egg, which was an extra large egg. If I had added an extra egg, was it going to make a lot of difference? Probably not. It would just absorb it. But what I, I'm trying to tell, say, tell folks and, and share is you don't need a recipe all the time. What you want to think in terms of flavors. 
So if the food is salty, don't add salt. But think of what's complimentary, spicy, sweet. Turkey can be bland, especially leftover turkey, if it's not prepared all a different way. So then add it with something that's got texture, that's got flavor. In this case, I wanted to reuse the stuffing. That I got my so little funny. stuffing rolls. Now, that was I could genius. very easily... Here, let me show you. So, so for Christine, if Christine made a stuffing that was a keto, okay, with her keto bread, maybe she made a stuffing. I'm going to make a little sandwich. You could turn these waffles, and if you put cheddar cheese in here, when you do it in the waffle maker, remember, cheddar cheese in the waffle maker will get hard. There you go. I just made myself a cute little sandwich that if I had um, a keto gluten-free flour or stuffing, it would work. And it's cute. It'll be a mess to eat. It's a fork and knife dish, but it would work. Yeah, it's cute. You had some people say that they'd eat this and they'd eat that or they'd order it at a restaurant. Like, it looks so good. I have to say, I love my waffle maker for everything. And, you know, stuffing, dre uh, dressing, it's really just bread repackaged. So what are the ways, remember... How many of you love, even though if you're a person of a certain age and won't admit it in public, you love grilled cheese sandwiches, right? <laughs> well, I the know. waffle maker just turns the, the, the bread or the dressing into a grill dressing. Um, and it's easy to clean. They're inexpensive. I think this one was like 20 bucks at Target last year. They're not particularly, I mean, they're cheap online as well. But, you know, even the, the, the panzanella salad, you know, it was just leftover bread that I took. Gorgeous. I had some cucumbers. I had roasted red peppers. I had marinated artichoke hearts. I had leftover cheese. I had some um, cucumbers. I had some radicchio. Let me let me clarify that. Not everybody knows this is what radicchio is. Mm -hmm. It is small and purple. It's softer than cabbage, but it's bitter. It's got a bit of a bitterness to it. And like kale, like fennel, which is also in this, it lasts. So you put dressing on it, olive oil and vinegar stuff. It doesn't wilt. So it's a perfect party food. You know, I make a Christmas dish and I think I have a TikTok about it with orange wedges, fennel and kale with a citrus vinaigrette. Because at a party, I can make that early on, put it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in the bowl just before everybody comes. It's already mixed. I can add nuts, which I tend to do. And it will last the entire buffet or open house and stay crispy. Matter of fact, it will stay crispy for several days because kale is kind of like the dinosaur, dinosaur of vegetables. It never gets soft. So it's a perfect salad for you when you want a green salad, or in this case, because turkey is so fat. And it's like duck. It's, we love that fat. It coats our tongue. It makes us, you know, and let's face it, between the mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes, the, the corn souffle, which is the only one I didn't make this year, the um, uh, carrots, which have honey and butter, your tongue is coated. So you eat a bitter salad like that, and it helps freshen the palate. So you end up, A, tasting the food. And what I find is you end up eating less. We often eat more because we can't taste. After a certain period, everything is so rich in our mouth. That's why you either have a sip of wine, which is astringent, or you eat some bitter cabbage or some parsley. A palate cleanser. A palate cleanser. That's really what it becomes. And there are many things that people use for it. Wow. So, um, uh, any, any, um, I'd love to know if there's any thoughts or questions or what would people add? What would you add to this if you were making it with your leftovers? Dan said, Dan said that pizza shops need to start serving dressing waffle crust. And there's a, there's a chef bear 415 that says, hello, Frank. Oh, hello, Orlando. He's local for me. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're out. Oh, yeah, you never get to see me on here, huh? Um, so, folks, if you just are rolling through, we're part of Food Talk TV. I have three of our favorite um, ladies in the room, and I think I have four of our other favorite creators. We are this oddly diverse group of people who come together over really one passion. We all cook differently. We all make food differently, but we all enjoy hearing about it. We came together under Food Talk TV with Cooking with Kaz. Um, uh, let's see, Cooking with Kaz, October Dragonfly, Chef Bradley, the Chef God, Just Like Granny, uh, 
gluten-free mommy Ann just dropped off, uh, Cook and Erica, Dan, the and Dan, the organizer man. The organizer man. Did I forget anybody? I don't think so. I think there's 10 of us now. And um, water cooks and our, uh, Ashby cooking. There we go. There we go. So we all come together. Every day, one of us cooks. We all have a different style. Although, what I'm noticing, we all have a different style. But, like, I'm already planning to make a recipe of Moises to Chef God because he has me thinking. He sends me pictures because I handle the blog. So I get first thing every morning, everybody's pictures. So by 6 in the morning, I'm already slapping at myself going, yeah, now I want this all day. <laughs> but we have we have the blog. We try and put recipes. Matter of fact, I think as of this week, we have over 60 recipes. And that's oh. just in the last seven months that we've been putting them up there. So I'm really excited for hitting 100. And uh, we come live once or twice a day. We, we share recipes on TikTok itself. And uh, we try to just make creative. Sometimes we have themes. Sometimes we do competitions. This week, we were all doing variations on leftovers. But, you know, it's for several days after Thanksgiving, I was tired of leftovers. So I wanted to change up the pot of profile. And what I did was I did a Thanksgiving adaption of panzanella, which is a bread, a bread salad with stale bread. And then I made stuffing, dressing, and vegetable waffles. And I Those are them a couple different ways that you could dress them up. It's really up to you. So don't limit. Think of this as inspiration. Open your refrigerator. It's a great excuse to clean the refrigerator out and say what I do not want to throw away is what I think. Right. That's what, that's what Christine said last night when she made her soup. She was making a turkey soup with her. I think she boiled the carcass or whatever. Right, Sherry, beforehand? Yeah. And so she said she just she could clean out a refrigerator and just put all the stuff in her soup as well. Her uh -huh. soup looked really good, too. But, yeah, anyway. it was. That's really why I like to make stock because I don't even have to peel things. Because I'm going to strain it anyhow. And then if I want to make soup after. It. And it was yeah. rich. Rich. Yeah. Yep. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this. What time is it? I'm a little bit earlier than an hour, but it's hey. tonight was really about thinking. Now, I'm Until telling you, though, we've had some incredible recipes by, by the two <clears> ladies <throat> that were, are on here. All of the folks. Uh, Bradley, I'm going to just beat him when I see him with the damn Brussels sprouts with cheese. That's making me crazy. I'm like thinking of all these recipes that I want to make now, probably for Christmas, because I don't have the time to do now. Dan um, is giving you all kinds of applause and compliments. And uh, okay. Dan did an incredible. It's unfortunate. Dan has a very, very small kitchen. So he, you know, he has a, he works with a, you know, some limitations, but he pulled off some incredible and you can watch all of our lives every week. So this live will, will be up on, uh, Facebook, um, no, it'll be on Facebook and YouTube in about a day, all of our lives. So if you miss a Sunday live, a weekday live, don't sweat it. You can go check them out on, on YouTube. And we use the same profile name on YouTube and Facebook. Yes. Yes, we do. And I, yeah. please follow Food Talk TV. Follow the people. When you go in Food Talk TV here on TikTok, you will see all the creators. Also, foodtalktv.com. You can hear all the news is there. All the news, and all the recipes, the blogs. The blogs, the recipes. We, we have a Pinterest. We have, um, well, even we have a Snapchat. Um, Andrea, gluten free mama, Ann, who was just on, is yeah. there. Um, just like Granny helps us with our scheduling and our, our theme events. We all take part in different ways. Um, and the reality is, if you're interested in taking part, we have a process. You can visit our bio or go to the website about what the process is. Um, we we'll probably won't be setting people up at least uh, uh, for the next steps for a few weeks trying to get through the holidays. But we just, you know, and, and everybody's busy. Everybody's got different things in their life, but we want to all get together. We do this um, and we just have some fun with it. And for me, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I cook for myself. I cook growing up. Uh, I'm not looking at restaurant quality, although I'm with people who make such beautiful food. I'm always trying to amp up my own game. So, you know, I'm always trying to amp up how it looks. But the reality is I want amazing. my food to taste good. I want it to be, I, if I work a 10 hour day, I want it to be simple to prepare and I don't want to throw food away at the end of the week. So I try to reuse things as much as I can. And that's what tonight was. It's 
rest, it's going to be, we have a few more days of creators who are coming up with some really interesting dishes. This is my version of a waffle with sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, carrots, and dressing. Cooked in the waffle maker and an Italian inspired canzanella, which is stale bread salad with bitter greens, persimmons, citrus dressing, uh, roasted peppers, artichoke hearts, everything that came from the appetizer and the salad got thrown in. It's softened here. Let me show you. Somebody asked that question. So hey, hey, I can't Frank, touch that. Um, Frank Dan says he would pay a lot for that plate. Oh, good. I like to hear that. So remember that how hard that, that original bread was, the, uh, the seeded loaf? This is how hard it is now. And that's just from sitting in, you know, absorbing the vinegar, absorbing the citrus. And it's got just enough flavor. You got the fresh herbs I added again. It's like a perfect salad for dinner or lunch. It's making my mouth water. For, for I, real. No, I was going <laughs> to... I was going to make a fresh salad. This is probably going to go with me to lunch tomorrow when I go to the office. Thank y'all for 25K. Oh, thank you. And, you know, folks, I know it's a Monday after a holiday. People are busy. Anybody, if you're new, I'm Frank underscore Mentor SF. In the room, we have Sketchy Chef and uh, Sherry underscore Skinner. In the chat box, you'll see all of our, our friends from Food Talk TV. Um, you follow all of our personal platforms, uh, most of them are incredible food platform artists and creators. I tend to be all over the map, so I reserve my artistic food for Food Talk TV most of the time. But uh, follow us, join us, participate, give us ideas. This is, you know, you're why we do this and what we, we're doing on our platforms. And um, check out the blog, check out the website, check out all of our social platforms, and most of all, engage. Engage us, ask us questions, send us comments. What and follow said. us every day. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate Sherry, everybody being Trisha, here. thank you. And I know, Sherry, you got a hot date with Blake tonight, don't you? I'm so sorry I was late. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, Y'all will go listen to the voice clip I sent before I went live. We Man. will. Well, I, I appreciate you making time for well, all of you, Andrea, as well. And uh, I'm happy to jump on tonight. Dan, I hope you're feeling better. I don't know how you're even standing up with everything we went through with getting these food recipes. I don't know. I still, like, Monday should be a national holiday for, for people who cook oh, from Thanksgiving. It takes us that long. But I'm going to wrap us up. They, thank you, everybody. Please, please follow us. Send us your, what, your, what you want to see. I'll follow all of our creators. If, if I move too fast and you lost one of the creators, go to foodtalktv.com or check out our our, um, our TikTok profile because we each have our own profile um, playlist and you can follow us through there any way you like you can find us we all talk a lot so you'll find us eventually and stay tuned for tomorrow Tuesday we'll be back on again all right. at 11 enjoy your Monday Central Standard Central Standard tomorrow 11 Central Standard time and it'll be uh, Gluten Free Mama Ann and Bama Okay. And that's important to know, folks. We have people who live in the East Coast, the Central Coast, and the West Coast, and Sweden. So sometimes it gets a little crazy on what time we're going live. We try to keep it updated on the website or posting um, a, a timer so that you know. Just follow, follow the bell. Follow us. You'll get an announcement when we're getting ready to go live. All right. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.